Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. So a couple of questions. Um, first thing to come up tonight is uh, the idea of feeling your finger as opposed to thinking about your finger. And it's a, it's a fairly tricky question because uh, we don't usually even consider that. It's, it's a, uh, the, um, most of the time, we and our fellow humans are actually just running it all through the thinking process anyway. And it's a, an actual shift in awareness to be able to go into the conscious and intentional feeling of something. So the, to actually bring your awareness to it in such a way is like, you're not telling yourself a story about the finger. And this goes for everything, by the way, just as any time I talk about feel your feet, feel you, feel the ball of your foot, feel the, the knee wand point, whatever. I'm talking about actually activating the part of your body which is able to access that, that sense of what uh, is the sensing prior to the thinking about it. And it's something that we're doing at, at a pre-conscious level all the time, but we're part of the, the key to understanding Taiji Chuan beyond a superficial level is being able to shift into conscious feeling, conscious doing. And that is where, this is a topic that came up last week with the, um, the um, sensory motor, the, um, yeah, the sensory motor, the afferent and the efferent neural networks. So that whenever you are, if you just take your finger and wiggle it, there is a doing aspect of this. That's the motor or efferent function. That's saying, oh, I'm, I'm moving my finger. What's happening is a signal is coming from your central nervous system to activate muscular contraction, which causes that finger to move back and forth, which is very cool and something that, that we humans are very proud of being able to do. Um, now, there's also a information's coming back from your finger. It's coming back from your whole body constantly. But in this case, you're you're, since you're consciously moving your finger, there's information coming back. And one of the things it'll tell you is, hey, Rick, you're moving your finger right now. And that's say, that's the information that's coming back. I don't have to articulate that to know that. I don't have to say that, say that story to myself, but to know that, that there's this, this is occurring because this is, the story comes after the feeling. Okay, so I can take that even further and, and say, okay, now my fingers, I'm feeling my finger very tight, very tense, right? I'm, I'm really you, contracting my muscles a lot, okay? And so that information is coming back. So at, at the cellular level, there is this information that is being sent out moment by moment. And trillions of bits of information are happening because you've got you've got roughly 70 trillion cells in your body, and every one of them is sending out signals. And you're up, it's distilled down to your five senses, which reduce all that information down to a mere 15 or so million bits of information per second. So your senses are reducing that, they're a reducing valve to, to do that, of which your conscious mind takes it down even further and divides that by a million. And we're down to just a couple of dozen, maybe a dozen, a couple of dozen bits of information per second. So our conscious mind is the thinking part. And that's saying, oh, that's, this is what's happening. It's telling me a story. My conscious mind is telling me a story. Rick, you're moving your finger. Can't you feel that? Yes, you can. can oh, I can even feel the, I can even feel my, my fingernail. I can feel a tingling at the end of my finger. And then so as I bring more and more awareness into that one point, 
then I move farther from the story and more into the actual afferent sensory incoming information at a raw level. And it's there that we get to the cool stuff because it's when we reduce everything down through the conscious mind, we have separated out from life to be able to tell a story about it. And that's what we humans do and we're very good at it. And I think, you know, we should continue doing that as well. But what we're doing in Tai Chi is we're saying, I'm gonna hit the pause button on the story maker. And I'm just gonna go into the raw, the raw data coming in. And that's where the feeling comes in. Does that help, Scott? You're on mute, Scott. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. I mean, you can you can do it. You can grab it with your, your finger. Just do this right now. Just grab it with your hand. OK, just grab your finger with your hand like that. And just notice the sensations there and then take your hand away and notice that there's a difference. And so just being able to get between those two is uh, shift you between the thinking and the feeling. Well, the thing that gets me is the thing that I guess probably trips me up is, so now if I'm noticing all them sem those sensations, isn't that a story? You know, that's, it's like, where, where's, the, where's the demarcation between is, is the story and the feeling, right? Right. That's the, and th there's where the fun is. Okay. Exploring that territory, exploring that line of demarcation because it's happening every every moment of your life, and your ability to bring awareness to that to that process is um, what will take your game to a whole new level. Your ability to to get out of your head for the moment and actually feel into your body. And then to then unlock the super conscious that allows you to then think and feel at the same time, or at least toggle back and forth very fast, like you know, many, many times a second. And that's where once you, once you get that, once you move into that super conscious state, then you're not limited you're not trying to run everything through the story. The story is happening and you can check in on it or not as you would, because you part of your, your nervous system is updating that, sto that story moment by moment, whether you like it or not. Even while you're sleeping, it's updating your story. And you know it, a lot of it's gonna be really boring and it's not going to, to occupy much of your attention. But then you know when we're dreaming, we are, we're doing the same thing. We're updating our story using, we're taking out the filters of the rational mind and then it opens us up to all kinds of, of weird possibilities. And that's what's happening when we're, we're asleep. It's, we're using the same amount of, the brain is using the same amount of energy while you're sleeping as it does while you're awake. And so uh, you're going to the same amount of oxygen, the same amount of nutrients. So the game, you know, they call it the default mode network. That's one way of describing it. It's because, it, yeah, this is this stuff is happening all the time, and it's happening whenever you don't consciously override that default mode network. Okay. Anybody questions? Richard, you got a question or a statement about that? Um, I'm I'm just thinking about um, the challenge. Seems to be developing a way to pay attention to the sensory information without thinking about it. Yes. I don't know what that means, but that seems, you know, sometimes, sometimes if we just say things, the same thing in different ways, it will resonate with someone. Uh-huh, sure, sure. But, but that, I think you're absolutely right. It, it, it requires practice. This is the process of becoming awake is whenever you are opening up to, your whole potential, the, all the different parts of your awareness, you can, and with with a little bit of luck, you know, we're never going to know it all. 
that the game will continue until we are, you know, till we leave this mortal coil. And we just, because uh, it is something that there is such a vast potential there that, yeah, you're not going to get it all, but you can know more today than you did yesterday. You can have a bit more awareness now than you did then, you know, and the best is always yet to come then. If you look at it that way, it's like, oh, this is a never ending quest for understanding and uh, it keeps going on. And you'll find these plateaus, these little flat points, these po points of illumination where it all makes sense and I got it and, and this is it. And you, you get the whole package in that moment and then, okay, then what? You move on to the next. That's that you build a little a little shrine there for that particular awakening that you had, and then you move on to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and it never it never stops, unless you choose not to go on. You know you can you can hang out and you can you know milk the same cow forever and ever, or you can say, you know there are other other cows out there that I can milk. And uh, then you go on and do that. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, or not, you know, it's, you get to play the game. That's, that's, your, that's your choice. And, um, you know, uh, for me, the, the, the fun is like saying, oh, what else is possible? I got that. Okay, good. Nice. I got this package. Good. All right. I can count on that package. I know that when I point my index finger that I move into a state of energetic coherence and, and that's really cool. Okay, now what? Then I move on to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing, and it keeps it keeps opening, 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 and every it's heuristic. That is, it tends to lead you to discover more. That's when you go that route. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions, thoughts, arguments, disagreements? Okay, uh, all good. Okay, so let's. Uh, Wait, Valerie. Valerie, Valerie. Oh, I see that hand. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I probably know the answer to this myself, and that it's just a matter of practice. Um, but it's. Uh, yeah, I'm not being very patient. That's probably bottom line. Okay. It's like feeling the bot. I can't bottom. imagine you not being patient. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Lynn, stop laughing. Um, feeling the ball of my foot, setting my knee, and then uh, relaxing the quaff or releasing the quaff. When you lead us through something, I don't think about it. I'm just, I'm doing. Right. But when I'm off by myself and I'm practicing, I have to go through those three steps. And I'm not always, I don't always get there. Um, so is it just that? Is it just a matter of practice until, you know, maybe there'll be an aha moment? Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's like, like anything, you know, <laughs> if you're, you're working on your golf swing, you know, <laughs> and you do it wrong, you know, a thousand times. 5,000 times, then you finally hit one right and you say, oh, oh, that was easy. I got that now. And then you try another one. Oh, no, it's, <laughs> then you hit it another thousand times. And then, oh, another one happens. This time I do two in a row and yay, go me. And then, <laughs> and, and then you take a, you take a couple of weeks off and you forgot everything. And so you got to go and start it all over again, but that's okay. Cause part of the game, I think is constantly creating new new neural connections and and new uh, opening up to new possibilities and weighing things and this is where the story comes in you weigh things like okay this happened and this was really profound and how does that fit with this other thing that I do and da, 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 and then you and but Joe says his thing is even better than my thing so I have to listen to that. And Joe tells me about his thing. And 
wow, that's really cool, Joe. So I, how'd you do that? And then we, we, we compare notes and, and, you know, we kind of play around with that. So that's the, uh, I think that's, that's the game. You know, it's just, uh, the fun is in the discovery. The fun is it, it, I get more juice out of a good question than I do out of a good answer. You know, okay. So that's, uh, you know, it's something that, that it's a, you know, Oh, it's something unknown there. Oh, good. I'd much rather hear that than someone says, aha, I have the secret of, of, ev of everything here. And this is the answer. And I say, okay, 42. Great. All right. <laughs> what do I do with that? You know, um, <laughs> the, 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 the question is, is, is infinitely more interesting to me than, than the, than any of these answers. And the, Things that I'm I'm sharing with you guys is uh, stuff that I've come across, and I'm hoping that they provoke in you more questions. Like, all right, that was weird. What happened there? You know, and then we we can we can explore that together. And that's 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 the fun of this whole Tuesday night thing that we do is is we get to explore this stuff and, and find out what language is the best language for describing these experiences. We're sharing experiences, we're sharing stories. That's right, yeah, <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, 42. So, um, so yes, so uh, um, we're, we're sharing these experiences and we're saying, how do I make sense of that? And some will say, I got an idea. We'll make sense of that by putting it in this particular ideological framework. And I say, oh, that's cool, you know, uh, but does that fit this over here? And if it excludes too much information, then we say, we're gonna have to tweak that, that, that model to be, able to, in, to be able to make it more, uh, more valuable. <laughs> Always hold on to your towel. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yeah. So the uh, uh, one thing I, I guess the thing I'd like to go on to now, since we're we're oh, actually I want I, I wanted to share something with you because last week we talked about afferent and efferent, okay, and how it's really cool to be able to distinguish it and to mindfully do that. So. Um, um, I got an email since then that uh, from a friend, a friend of mine, a friend of a lot of yours, so I'm not going to mention the name on, on the screen here, but the, because uh, this will go out to the, the whole intraweb, but the, uh, uh, this friend had suffered a stroke a year ago and was paralyzed on the right side of his body and was having a lot of trouble recovering from that. And has been making some strides, but even a year later, the right arm is still not working. He can't write. He can't use his right arm to, to write. He can't use anything, uh, anything else. So um, hadn't been able to, to lift his right arm in a year. So I explained to him about afferent and efferent and how we can, by consciously feeling, we can rehabilitate the neural network, which has the potential by feeling things afferent, we can also awaken the efferent part of the brain because there's a whole lot of redundancy in our brains. And sometimes it's just, it's always looking for these little pathways to get through. And if, we, if we're still trying to use the same pathways to do something and still failing at it, like say if I'm trying to lift my arm up and I'm still trying to do it the same way I did before my stroke, before I'm paralyzed on my right side, I'm gonna have a problem. So, but if we sneak around the back and we use the afferent neural network, that is we feel, then there's, it awakens part of the brain that has been asleep or maybe even killed, you know? And uh, so, okay, so we did that. So anyway, the long story short, I shared with him this idea. And since then he's been practicing it and has been able to do something he hasn't in just in the last less than a week, he's been 
able to do something he hasn't been able to do in over a year. And that is to be able to, to lift his arm, right? To be able to, to pick it up and, and do things and cross over and, and, and with, with, uh, with help be able to actually extend the arm because the arm was, you know, basically had atrophied because it, you know, was, was uh, uh, paralyzed for, for a year. So just being able to pick it up and, and, and hold it over his head, something he was unable to do. And then, and he was able to do a variety of exercises, which a week ago he could do zero. And then the first time he tried it, like, you know, four or five days ago, he was, uh, was able to do one rep of, of each and now he's up to like 10 and getting getting stronger every day. So I'm just saying with this afferent and efferent stuff, it goes so far beyond just, uh, you know, um, talking about it. And there's actually, it has a very profound effect on your physical body. You can, it changes everything. And those of us who are not paralyzed, if we can utilize that, we can then, instead of just being able to move the arm, we can move with a great deal of, of power and dexterity and, and awareness. So, and there we get into the conscious feeling, conscious movement of Taiji Chuan, which is at the core of that. Okay, so that uh, I just wanted to share that with you. Want to go to a gallery to see if anybody anybody have any questions or thoughts about that? Just okay. Stan, you had something. You have to turn off. You have to turn your speaker on, Stan. Your microphone. Okay. Now the question is how to mindfully use the uh, uh, that uh, that particular nerve grouping. How to use it mindfully? Uh, you know, make that connection. In other words. Uh, actively feel, mindfully feel. Dan, put your hand on the top of your head. Mm. Okay, good. Can you feel the top of your head with uh, your basically hand? Basically, the, the roundness. Yeah, the roundness. Yeah. No, no. Before you thought roundness. Can you feel before you think roundness? Uh, Oh, I felt it. Yes. Good. Uh, can definitely. you feel? Can you feel your hand with your head? I'm not sure about that. Well, sure. just, just just use your head and see if see if you can tell that there's a hand up there. I I, I think you have something there because I do feel something up there. Okay, good. There, there's something up there. You may or may or not know it as a hand. You can yes. figure that out with your, with your, uh, you know, with your rational mind, but you you feel something that's that's happening up there, right? There's mm -hmm. your head is feeling the hand, the hand is feeling the head. Two separate sets of nerves. Yes. Okay. You're able to then distinguish using your rationality. You're able to distinguish between the two. You can also feel them as one event if you choose so not only is there a wholeness there which includes both there's also mm -hmm. a separation so not only do we have the taiji which is the wholeness we also have the yin and yang which is the polar the the uh uh the dance of opposites so um mm -hmm. so lick and nick and lynn say would another way of saying this be the experience of sensation that happens before any verbalization occurs. And I would say yes, except for I wouldn't call it experience. Because I would say <laughs> that <laughs> I would say that experience is what happens after after you are uh, you start to make sense of it. Experience is once the story kicks in, that's when experience happens. That's when we start mm -hmm. to, we, we've created enough separation from the event that we can then talk about it or think about it. That's when experience kicks in. And then, but prior to that, prior to the experience, there is the event. And it's before, you know, the, you know, you go and before, you see the sunset and prior, this is Jonathan's favorite. We, you know, before the sunset, before you say how beautiful you, there's, there's something there. And that's the, um, you know, we want to, 
be able to, to do that, be able to, to have that moment of, of, of pure awareness prior to what I would call consciousness, that is consciously recognizing the event. Okay. And so Lynn. Yeah. So when we were talking the other day, you were mentioning this story about okay. this person with the stroke. And you also talked at that time about elbow gin. Yes. Right. Um, and giving them, I think you said elbow gin as a way to focus on the neural network. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that connection? And that might be also helpful. Sure. So since this is the case, the problem is being able to use the arm. So my intuition was that there was a kink in the hose in the shoulder that came, I, it came from two things. One was atrophy, that there's the, the fact that it's not being used and it, the chi is, is not flowing as freely as it once did. Then the, uh, so the other thing is whenever he would try to use it, try to lift, he would do it the same way we all do before we learn about elbow gin, and that is we try to tense the muscles in the shoulder to cause the arm to go up. So when we use elbow gin, we are, before we lift the arm, we reach with the elbow and open up the shoulder joint. This unkinks the hose. So, you know, I think I, uh, may have shown this last week, but I just show you right now, if you just put your arm on your, on your body like this, keep your, keep your elbow against your, your body. And you just want to reach down with your elbow without lifting your arm. Just, just reach down with that. So as if you're, you're going to touch something down there, you can also do it by putting your hand on there and you say, Oh, I'm just going to reach down and touch my, touch my hand. So you're feeling the elbow and feeling reaching down. And when you do that, you're creating a separation there mm -hmm. at the shoulder joint. You're opening up the space. You're also disconnecting the shoulder tension. So we, if we just practice that, so we get that, so we get the feeling of that, the feeling of opening that shoulder joint, then you the feeling of that becomes more important than the instructions of the central nervous system to tell muscles to contract. Okay, so it said, instead of saying, okay, Rick, reach with your shoulder. Okay, reach with my shoulder, right? No, no, Rick did it wrong. Rick lifted his shoulder by tensing up the muscles. Oh, okay, so I want to, what am I gonna do here? Oh. Uh, I don't get it. You know, but then if I feel this and I say, oh, okay. So I just, oh, I just reach down. And prior to that, like, how am I going to get there? I just, I just do it. I just feel that. And then I orient to that feeling that of, of, the, of the arm opening up. So then if I, once I do that, then I can do that anytime. I can do it, my hands over my head. I just reach with my elbow opening up the shoulder joint and it creates space there, which allows the chi to flow. Valerie. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, anybody else, is it, does, that, does that answer that question? Okay, cool. Um, moving on. Okay, so. Um, which actually leads very nicely into uh, the next segment, which is what I want to talk about, is sequential activation of joints. Okay, and um, I've talked about this before, and probably not for a while, so I'd like to bring it, put it back on the table, and... Uh, Sequential activation of joints 
is consciously moving in such a way that you are going to maximize the efficiency of whatever body part it is you're using. And you do that by establishing the, the placement of the joints this, so that you allow the chi to move with a minimum of disruption. You're not kinking the hose, basically. And this is the, this is the in, in the classic, they talk about the nine-channeled pearl. That is, you're, you're threading the chi as though threading uh, the nine-channeled pearl. And what they're referring to there is a, a um, at least this is what um, uh, Wason Liao talked about. He said that a uh, nine-channeled pearl was a wooden ball that had holes drilled through it that were curved and that young ladies would have to take a thread and pass it through the holes without getting jammed up. And that would, you know, and their dexterity as well as their awareness was, you know, that was a way of developing that. And so with the, uh, the it's an image to describe threading the chi through the joints, through the nine joints. And, you know, they're in very gross terms, you're thinking of the, the ankles and the knees and the, and the quad and the spine and the shoulders and the elbows and the wrists and the fingers. And that's the, you know, so we get this, this, this thing, but that's, you know, metaphorical. Um, there are obviously more joints than that. And, uh, but the, um, the idea is, is, is the same. So if you do what you've always done, the chances are you will kink the hose because we learn these type of movements basically by mimicking our environment, mimicking those people around us who are moderately successful at, at life, including our parents. And so we, we stumble around in the dark and we find somewhat efficient systems of getting through life without, uh, without totally uh, breaking down, uh, but it doesn't mean it's the best way. And when we're talking about Taiji Chuan, we're talking about what is the most efficient way of doing this so that I allow the chi to move through the nine channel pearl without obstruction. And that means to establish your joints in a pattern which allows you to activate your appendages with a minimum of muscular tension. Okay, and um, so if you ask most people to lift their arm, they'll do what I just showed you before about you know the uh, you know with my, my friend. It's like well, just gonna use the shoulder muscles to to lift the arm. And if you do it that way, this will, the chi will be blocked at the shoulder. A trickle will go through, but it's not going to be sufficient to, to do any really cool stuff. Your white crane spread wing will suck. You know, it may look okay from the outside, but in terms of its, uh, its ability to, to do anything with your white crane spreads wings, it's going to suck because it will have no gin. It will be a Lee operation. And if you are really muscular, you may be able to fake it, but that's not what we do. We want to be able to, to effortlessly use that soft power to be able to, to make magic happen. And so we want to be able to, to do that. How do we do that? We do not initiate from the shoulder, we reach with the elbow. So if we just do that as our first order of business, and then the wrists and then the fingers and, and the shoulder is the last to come online, then we got gin. Okay, you wanna give me a hand here, dude? We get the, well, uh, We'll just do a little demonstration here.
Okay, so you're gonna do like a white crane spread wings, right arm, so just, uh, so good. So good, that was good, that was perfect, right. Okay, so if if Maria does that, she's lifting with her, her shoulder, then there's a blockage here in the shoulder. And this, this en the energy here is insufficient. There's no gin there, right? So if particularly now, if you're trying to come up like this and, and then I grab and I give some resistance to this and you're going into that posture, notice that it, it, doesn't, it doesn't budge because she is the pivot point this is very mechanical now. So the pivot point is up here. So if you're, we're trying to move this long lever, and you got a pivot point up here, and it's not you're not going to get very far because these muscles are not sufficiently strong enough to be able to overcome any kind of resistance. And more importantly, you're blocking the energy flow. You're blocking the gin. But if we if Maria First thing she does is she reaches out against my hand here, just feels that 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 opening there, that separation, and then she sets the elbow and starts to move up. I'm already gone, right? It, the because the gin was there, right? And she doesn't even have to raise the arm. She, once she sets that elbow, she she can just rotate the the arm like that and it it sends me. Why? Because there's gin there and it has an uprooting quality to it. But the, uh, so the, if she just sets the elbow first, then the wrist. So when we have the sequence here, it's counterintuitive. The sequence is elbow, wrist. No, not fingers here, it's a wrist. So the, the wrist is the next thing. And so she starts to move that and, and the relax, relax here. And then the fingers come online. And then she reaches, then the shoulder opens up and boom, we've got, we've got gin. We've got, we've got magic happening, right? And the beautiful thing about this is if she's got this, she can just, just a very light touch and it's all it takes to get the job done. It just poof. And this is where we get the Taiji magic, right? But it's in the sequential activation of joints, which is counterintuitive, which is you're going to have to override your body's natural tendencies and say, no, nah, no, nah, we're doing it this other way. It doesn't make any sense at all, but trust me on this. And you and you go and you do it. And the same thing happens, you know, if if we go like this, she reaches out with the elbows here, right? And if she tries to push me with her hands, not happening. But she feels the elbows. She, she, then, feel, she then feels the wrists. Then she feels the fingers, boom, gone. Okay, and this is, this is happening at every move. We're doing, we're doing the, you set the elbow, you, Reach with the wrist. So you're reaching with the elbow. You're reaching with the wrist. You're opening up these, these joints. So once just, she doesn't have to even finish the job here because it's already, the gin is already created. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, let's uh, go to go to gallery. Here we go. Good. Okay. So, uh, did that make sense to everybody? Made sense. Good. So the uh, going back to Valerie's point, which was, you mean I got to practice this? <laughs> and the answer is yes. <laughs> but we have this opportunity. If you happen to know a Taiji transform, you get to do it. Anytime you want, you get to practice it, but it requires getting out of the, the floaty Taiji state of just, hey, whatever happens, man, kind of, kind of thing, and move into the thing like, oh, no, I am writing new code here. 
<laughs> in, in the computer. I'm not just following the program that has been built in the default program of this computer. I am actually going in there and I am reprogramming. I'm writing new code for this thing and making something, doing it an entirely different way. And that takes a little bit of uh, courage because there's discomfort in the uncertainty, discomfort in not knowing it all already. Hey, I've been, I've been doing this for decades and I should have figured this out already. No, this, this, you've dealt into a game here that has no end. This is, <laughs> there is, there are infinite possibilities in this game and it, uh, nobody gets to exhaust all the possibilities in a lifetime. You can be really good at it. You can be really good at, at your own little piece of the, uh, of the puzzle, but nobody gets the whole thing. Valerie. <clears throat> so what we're doing with the leg and foot would be that uh, sequential activation of the joints starting with the, but the, the ball of the foot isn't exactly a joint, but yes, it is. So you've got the, the ball, the knee, then the, the quad, right? That's right. that sequence. Okay. Right. So there's a sequential activation there as well. You're building up from the ground up. And you, you, uh, if you violate that sequence, it goes wrong. If you, if you try to assume qua before you establish the foundation that you're building on, it's not going to be that effective. That's not to say you're not going to get sum qua. It just means that it's going to be so what. You're not going to get. You're not going to get very far. Cool. Can you do an exercise for them to try this? Uh, yeah, we'll just see if there's any other questions here, if you, if you don't mind. Just see if there's any other. So, anybody else? Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's uh, let's do something with this. Okay. So the um, this is something very simple here, and uh, I right, well, I got it. We'll do the uh, exercise that uh, we've been playing with um, a few weeks ago. Uh, put your right foot forward. Your weights in your left. You feel the ball of your right foot. You push your right knee forward to, so you're setting the right the the right knee. You're establishing that position. You release the right claw by spiraling down to the left. And as you do that, you reach with the elbow. I just want you to pause a moment and feel into that. So we're just we're going back to weight back in the, uh, the left leg. You feel the ball of the right, set the right knee, and you Release the right quad. You spiral down to the left and reach with the elbow. So when you do that, just feel, just feel the, the awareness that's going through your body. Notice that you're actually outside of your story right now. You're just feeling into the, into the, into the body. You're into the gap between thoughts. And now rotate your forearm so the palm is up and you're reaching out. So what have we done here? We, we established sequential activation of joints in the leg, ball, knee, qual. We elbow, now wrist and rotate the forearm, fingers, reach with the fingers, okay? Notice that your shoulder really doesn't have much to say about this whole thing yet. Right? It's, it's, it's just sort of hanging out. Because you activated the elbow first. As a result, this is going to have a whole bucket of gin. All right? So now we're going to turn the waist to the right. And as we do that, we reach with the elbow 
reach with the wrist, reach with the fingers, rotate the forearm, and feel, uh, feel the hand, feel, feel both hands, feel both feet. So just bring your awareness to that. And notice that you've moved into the gap between thoughts as you've done this. You're, you're opening up to your super conscious. So now we're going to continue. You feel the ball of the left foot, your back foot, set the left knee and release the cross spiraling down to the right. And as you do that, reach with your left elbow. So we're spiraling down to the right and reach with your wrist, reach with your fingers, rotate left palm up, bring your right hand down. So they're even. I just feel into that. So notice we're going to the stillness here. We're feeling into the stillness. This is where we draw the bowstring back. This is where the energy gets mobilized. Now turn to the left, feel the left elbow, reach with that. Rotate the left forearm, feel the wrists, feel the fingers. And bring the right hand down. So the shoulder is involved, but it's being dragged along by the arm. It's not pushing the arm. It's being dragged along. So we have this, this structure now, which is not dependent on my shoulder muscles. There is a structure that is dependent on the tensegrity of the whole, of the whole system, the, the whole system working as a unit. I can relax my shoulders, reach out with those elbows, reach out with those fingers and feel, and feel the chi that's going through. Now feel the ball of the right foot, push your right knee forward, set that, and Spiral down to the left. As you do so, reach, reach with that right elbow and turn. Spiraling down to the, to the left and rotate the right forearm. Left hand comes down a bit. And feel into the stillness here. We're gathering we're mobilizing the chi. Now feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, turn. Reach with that right elbow and rotate the forearm. Opening the joints. Feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee. Spiral down to the right, left hand, reach with the left elbow, rotate the left forearm, reach with the fingers, right hand comes down. You're reaching out with that left arm, relax your shoulders, feel the chi moving through the whole system. Now turn. To the left, right hand comes down, left hand rotates, and we have that. Okay, this is a, the full young expression of this particular posture. Everything's wide open, and you're feeling the tensegrity. Relax your shoulders, reach with those elbows, open the joints. down and step in step up so the feet are parallel and just feel into the whole system feel into your whole body and feel the energy that's being generated there
So even in stillness, we've got all this chi that's moving through the body. But it's not just chi, it's jin. That is, it's chi that is, is where the, the chi and the body are interwoven so that it becomes this uh, a, a whole different thing. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. Releasing down. So notice we got that sequential activation of joints there in the leg. And step in with the right the left foot. Take a deep breath. sink and disappear the chi dissolve into the emptiness allow your mind to reside in that gap between thoughts feel without thinking Have a seat. Okay. Richard. Um, so on the closing move, I just realized that I shouldn't be lifting my arms with my shoulders. Excellent. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Okay, so the uh, uh, you had something, Lynn. Oh, I was just going to say that um, <clears throat> this time around, when we were doing that, I was really feeling the energy up here sort of like it was spreading out, you know, in the arms as it often does, but then kind of coming up to the head, you know, in, a, in an almost pulsy sort of way, which was kind of cool, kind of different. Cool. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, so the, uh, to summarize this, the sequential activation of joints gets you out of your own way. So taking the opportunity to explore this, this body that you've been hauling around for decades and getting a chance to say, hey, how about a new coat of paint? How about a, a lube job? Let's uh, let's fix this thing up here a little bit, and uh, you're able to by bringing this little bit of awareness to that. It's something that you know you can do. I mean, just this idea here. Uh, we kind of did it as a toss off. This is huge. Just just yeah, you know, grab that, grab this. Just reach reach with the elbow, and to relax the shoulder as you do that, and feel it. Feel it prior to the thinking about it. Same thing here, just you're feeling, feeling the elbow. And then, and then you, a uh, hundred times a day, a thousand times a day, you just kind of, oh, oh, you just open up and get that first step of the sequential activation. So, oh, coordinate that with the Sung Kwa. Spiral down to the left. Okay, I'm just gonna reach with my elbow. Oh. 
just get that so that it becomes something that you want to do. It's not something you have to do, not something you are contriving. You have to contrive it until it becomes, oh, I like this. So you just, no, it's firing down to the right, you know, just reach with that elbow, reach with both elbows, you know, oh, raise my arm. Okay, feel the elbow first and reach. The effective power is really dramatic. The increase in effective power is really dramatic. And it is the core behind making all the, uh, the fairy tales, <laughs> making all the Kung Fu fairy tales real. Not just real in the sense that, oh yeah, somebody else can do that. You know, some master that I know has, is able to do that. No, no, we want to be able to do it ourselves and say, oh, okay. And it doesn't mean you're at the end of the game. It just means that you built another platform and you can stand on that platform and go on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And it never stops, I hope. And uh, that's, you know, that's, that's the game. There's endless novelty in this, uh, in this world of ours. And, and it starts right here, the endless novelty of just the ridiculousness of getting 70 trillion cells together to do something as idealistic as make a body is, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a miracle. So, you know, let's celebrate that and say, okay, all right. So what else can we make this thing do? What else can we explore with this, this body, you know, at a time, at a phase of life when a lot of people are checking out, you know, we have an opportunity to say, no, 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 I want, it's just getting interesting. That's, that's what I like. I like to, hey, it's just getting interesting, you know, <laughs> I'm 70 now, and as Jonathan likes to say, life begins at 70. So it's, uh, you know, it, uh, yeah, well, hey, this is fun. Let's uh, let's not stop the let's not stop the merry-go-round. You know, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm not and and I'll, I'll, I don't want just one brass ring. I want a whole bunch. Okay, <laughs> more. <laughs> Give me more. <laughs> Great. So uh, thank you all so much. Love you. Thanks, Rick. Bye bye. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thank you, Rick.